All right, we're down to the final nitty gritties here on this uh, engine before we go and we put the front clip back on. Uh, the front clip sitting over there, but we're going we're going to get a couple little things done. One of the big ones is is to get this uh, oil sender on the back of the motor straight uh, because I'm running mechanical gauges and it, it goes in right back here where the oil sending unit is. It's kind of hard to see. I got an adapter back there to to to. There it is, right there. There's the adapter. We're going to run a manual gauge. So I'm I'm a mechanical gauge kind of guy. You know, analog. It's, it seems to work pretty good for me. I think it's stupid though. If you order this fitting from Autometer, okay, and that's their fitting, right? And you, and you, and you see the fitting right here. You, you see the fitting right here. And this is their sending unit, okay, from their gauge package. I got to go to an electric gauge on this one uh, because the mechanical gauge won't fit in there. But why the hell would a company make an adapter to adapt their sending unit and it's not drilled correctly? It's not thick enough. Why would I spend all this money for all automated stuff when I have to modify it and make it work? Put it on the drill press and drill a little more just so their little sensor can go in there. Something about that irritates the shit out of me. So we're going to keep the old mechanical oil gauge, but we're going to put a new electric temperature gauge in this spot right here. Now, there is a temperature sensor that exists over here on the front of the motor. But that is for the PCM to know what the temperature is, and that kicks the fan on and off according to the temperature of the engine. Uh, to uh, before we go and set the front clip on the motor, and then we can finish up the fuel system, we can finish up the uh, the clutch system, we can finish up the uh, uh, air intake system, uh, get all the hoses and radiator and all that mess straight, get the fan plumbed, the electrical. Yeah, I should move the front clip out here first before we set the set the car in its spot, right? All right. That G. All right, here we go. What are you talking about? All right. All right. Mine's a little off. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Keep trying to keep feeding up the fan. Over. Well, you know, it's always nice to have about five extra hands on it. Oh, yeah. You hear what from here, Chris? Yeah. So now, when we took this thing apart, I made sure to, to keep all the little washers and uh, body spacers that we had in the spots to, uh, you know, knew where they used to go so that everything was set up correctly. And uh, so hopefully the thing will line up correctly. It's always a challenge. You take an old car apart, and this thing's been apart and back together so many times that it's it's ridiculous. So this is where we're at on this project. Let's get the front clip back on. Get the hood, and we won't put the hood on yet until we get it running. Of course, we got a little more to do. We got to get the fuel system finished up. But part of those pieces are going to be inside the inner fender well now. And we got to get the clutch system finished up because the reservoir and hook the wiring up and all the rest of that. Radiator and uh, I'm going to reuse the radiator that was that was in the car, uh, aluminum Griffin aluminum radiator that I had, and reuse that. So all that's got to get hooked up. Air cleaner, mass airflow sensor. So we got we got the final final stuff to get this done. Um, and then the wiring inside the car and get the gauges straight, and then we'll uh, be ready to go for a ride. See what this thing does. Okay, one of the hardest things you got to do is to bleed the clutch in one of these cars. And what Mike and I did was we used uh, a regular, you know, regular vacuum pump, you know, a uh, brake bleeder type thing. And we unhooked the line from the bottom of the, uh, the reservoir here going down to the uh, uh, clutch master cylinder, this little rubber line, and we, we, we pulled uh, the fluid up. So what we did was, is uh, before we started pulling from the top, we took the brake, uh, the mat, uh, we took the clutch line loose here and stuck it down in the bottle we had zip tied uh, so that it would draw fluid from the bottom side. Now, what's, what we did, what I like is to use some of this clear tubing, you see the bubbles come up. And once you see the bubbles stop coming out, then you just real quick hook the one on the bottom back in 
and then all of a sudden you have a clutch pedal. It's magic. You can screw around trying to believe one of these uh, hydraulic clutches for hours and get nowhere. This tool right here will make it go a lot quicker for you. One other fun interesting detail we ran into is the shifter. Turns out the shifter that we got would fit Camaros and uh, Firebirds. But it turns out that the transmission is slightly different internally in a GTO. When we put this shifter in, we could get all the gears where we pulled back, like second, fourth, and sixth. But when we went forward to try to get first, the shifter just wouldn't go far enough. And you can see right here, we had a, a, a spot where it was binding against the, against the actual shift housing. Turns out that the GTO shifter is different. It actually sits back a little further in the housing here. So there's a custom built shifter. Hearst doesn't even offer this shifter. Thank goodness there's a guy out there called Core Shifters on the internet, uh, on eBay, that sold this to us for, I don't know, I think it was about 180 bucks, but it solved the shifter problem. So if you're using a GTO transmission, uh, understand that you will have to get a special shifter to use in an aftermarket car. Well, there you have it. We got it all back together except for a few details. I've got to get uh, a temperature gauge in the dash working. I've got to get the tack and the speedometer hooked up, which is just some messing around on the dash. And then I'm off to the muffler shop to get the muffler put on. So she's, she's pretty much done. The thing that's interesting about this project, as opposed to some of the other motor swaps I've done, is that there's no real tuning after the fact. Once you got the computer plugged in and working correctly, and you set the fuel pressure, uh, there really isn't a whole bunch else to talk about. There's no adjusting the distributor, and there's no setting timing or any of that mess. The computer does all that. Pretty amazing setup, and the power that this engine makes is absolutely astonishing. The only thing that I've ever run in this car that would rival it was a was a I had a. I don't know, a 468 big block in here with a supercharger that you know would fit under this neat this cowl hood and that was a badass setup that was a pretty cool setup so if you're interested in doing a project like that we don't do this at this shop I don't even call me about it but uh, I will send you a PDF with a all the part numbers and where I got things from and what I paid if you send me an email to powerstrokehelp at bellsouth.net alright so we got the car back in here after the test drives here I figured out that the 308 gear that I'm running in the rear differential is not going to be correct. I, I'm not even getting into the sixth gear in the transmission going down the freeway, so I'm moving the gearing to, to a 373. Also, we weren't able to run my exhaust out the side like I wanted to. I ended up going back with Master 44s and some good old fashioned redneck turndowns here. I was disappointed, but the problem with running the side exhaust is, is that in order to get it to drop low enough below the subframe connector that I installed, the muffler would actually have to hang way down here. And so, you know, the first speed bump you go over, uh, it's going to want to rip them right off. So I had to concede to common sense or better sense, not that there's anything that's even remotely sensible about this automobile, uh, but the sense, the common sense was here, I had to go back with my good old fashioned redneck turndowns. And, you know, it's a good looking setup, man. You get up under here and it's all pretty sanitary. And I think the thing I like the most about this is uh, is uh, no leaks, man. No leaks. And the thing actually starts and goes. One little item that I do on all my cars is I run a magnet. Any kind of metal caught in the, uh, in the filter will end up on that magnet. I always cut up my filters, my, my canister filters. After you drive the car, the computer will sort of sort itself out. Uh, it, uh, it has to go through, I don't know, call it a learning curve or whatever, but the car actually starts to calm down. It actually starts to idle a little smoother. And, and, but by God, when you put your foot in it, she's got plenty, plenty of power. I think once I get this 373 gear in here, I'll be a whole lot happier with it. Uh, a little less wheel spin at the get-go, uh, a little more traction. I was really toying with that 411 gear, but man, that will move me too far. I just feel like it's going to move too far, and I'd have to change the carrier out uh, when, you, when you go to a 411 gear. This whole center section piece here has to get changed out, and that's another 500 bucks. And we're so far over budget on this deal now that I just don't have it. So 